Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Lagrange formulation to treat pendulums. So we've seen how to do this with Newtonian mechanics. So now we're going to see how to do it with Lagrangian mechanics. So for our pendulum, We've got something that at the center, there's a mass hanging from a string of length L. And then at its furthest point, it's going to reach some height H and doing some trig, which I've shown in a previous video, we get that H equals L times one minus cosine theta. And you can check that. So, oh, this is the angle theta. At theta equals zero, you would be perfectly straight up and down. And cosine of zero is one. So one minus one is zero. So your height would be zero. So that checks out. Okay, so for our Lagrangian, you have the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So the kinetic energy for this mass could look like, maybe I'll do this on a new slide later. But regardless, our Lagrangian is always our kinetic minus our potential energy. So for the pendulum, our kinetic energy could look like this, m times x dot squared plus y dot squared. Right, because our pendulum moves not just in the x direction, but in the y direction. So we could write our Lagrangian like this, but then when we look at our potential energy, our potential energy is MGH. So H could be related to Y, but then we don't have any relation to X, which is perfectly fine. We could do it that way. But we've also seen that we can write our height as L times one minus cosine theta. So now our task will be to try to get our kinetic energy into something that depends on either L or theta instead of on X and Y. And so because of the geometry of our system, we know that the path length that this, so if this was at position zero, zero, and this was at position x, y, we know that the velocity, the change in position could either be delta x, so the the change in position could be using the quadratic formula, x squared plus y squared. Or if we look at the path length, s is l times theta.
And so using this realization, we can instead write our kinetic energy as one half m l theta dot squared. And theta dot is the same thing as omega, the angular velocity. And this should be squared also because the theta dot got a square, so the L gets a square too. Okay. So this is our kinetic energy for the pendulum. So now when we write our Lagrangian, T minus V, now we have a a Lagrangian that only has one variable that changes because our length, so you could have a system where the length of your pendulum is not constant, but that would be a bit more complicated. So in this Lagrangian, the mass is constant, the length of the pendulum is constant. So the only thing that's changing is our theta. So the angle that the pendulum is swinging through. Okay. So now that we have our Lagrangian, Now we want to write down our derivatives for our Euler-Lagrange equation. So for the Euler-Lagrange equation, we need the partial derivative with respect to theta dot. We need the total time derivative of that partial derivative with respect to theta dot. And we need the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. And that's because the Euler-Lagrange equation says that uh, the total time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot equals partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. So we want to set up this equation. And so we need all these derivatives. So the partial derivative with respect to theta dot. So in the first term, there's a theta dot. And in the second term, there's no theta dot. So the second term, the partial derivative of that would just be zero. So taking the partial derivative with respect to theta dot, we get, so the we bring down the two. So the one half and the two cancel, and you get ML squared theta dot. And now the time derivative of this will give you ML theta double dot. And so then our last partial derivative that we need to find, so this will be MGL minus MGL cosine theta. So the partial derivative of the first term with respect to theta is zero because there's no theta term. And then the second term, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this would be MGL sine theta. Okay, so now our Euler-Lagrange equation when we plug in all these derivatives we just calculated will be ML theta double dot equals MGL 
sine theta. So you can cancel out, did I miss a square? Yeah. Now you can cancel out these M's, and you can cancel out one of the L's. And then if we move everything to the same side, we get theta double dot minus G over L sine theta equals zero. Did I miss a minus sign? Yes, I did miss a minus sign. So this should be um, so there was a negative out in front of this. So when I distributed this out, this should be negative and this should be positive. And so then the derivative of positive sine is a positive cosine is negative sine. So this would be negative and then that's positive. Okay. So now we want to use the small angle approximation. which allows us to simplify this equation. So for the small angle approximation, sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. So that reduces this to theta double dot plus G over L theta equals zero. And so now this looks very similar to the um, second order differential equation that we had to solve for um, the mass spring system for simple harmonic motion. And so this theta double dot plus G over L theta equals zero. We'll have solutions like either exponential or we can write it as a cosine where this omega is equal to the square root of g over l. And this amplitude would just be the initial um, amplitude that you uh, hold your pendulum before it started swinging. And so the way we've set up our problem, this amplitude might be in terms of the angle. So for example, if you gave it an initial five degree, then that would be your amplitude of your swing. And then it would continue to go five degrees either side of the, the center equilibrium position. Okay, so now you've seen how to uh, set up Lagrangians for two simple uh, harmonic oscillator problems, one with a mass spring and one with a pendulum. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.